Hi, this is Mary Miller coming in again in regards to fibromyalgia and balance. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, again, more about sleep. I realized that the other video was starting to run into trouble in terms of time. So I've decided to make, in, in effect, part two about sleep. What can we do about sleep? What can we do about our beds? What can we do about being comfortable? Well, for one thing I've learned, um, and this has to do with sleep and it has to do with being awake, I found that wearing layer clothings, in other words, not like heavy sweaters, heavy coats, heavy anything, heavy blankets, for example, um, pays a real important point. We tend to sweat more than most people do. Um, so therefore, uh, you'll see, I'll try to point this, that I'm wearing an extremely light t-shirt. You can almost see through it. Uh, not really good for, you know, meeting people at the door. Uh, but the reality is, is that at least it keeps me from sweating so bad in bed that I can stay asleep for at least a couple hours in one stint. All right, um, because there are many people that wake up just wringing wet. And while I do have other pajamas, and yes, I do, um, I have found that unless they're 100% cotton, unless they happen to be really thin or thin type of consistency, then what can end up happening is that I will sweat so hard, I'll sweat through my clothes, okay? So layering is important. This means having very light layers of clothes and just adding and adding and adding. Now, when I was a child, I used to be able to wear uh, wool very effectively. I'm now allergic to wool, <laughs> okay? So no more wool. Um, I find that it has to be synthetic. Um, if it's not 100% cotton, it's in uh, like in like jackets and things like that. But if it's next to my skin, it has to be cotton or rayon or something that at least uh, wicks, you know, perspiration through. I find that the Artificial stuff just makes me feel like I'm wearing a baggy, and I wake up very, very wet. Same goes with your sheets need to be 100% cotton or bamboo alternative. Huh, pricey. But it has to be something that's so light and so thin. Egyptian cotton is the best that you're not sweating your way through th all this. Okay. So there we go with the sheets. Now the blankets. Again, your blankets need to be done in layers. And really, the most effective um, blankets need to be cotton. If they aren't cotton, and if you decide to go with um, some kind of a microfiber type of blanket, choose a, a little a little woolly, in other words, it looks like it's um, fur, but it isn't. And it's so thin that you can actually see through it. Why? Because it will actually allow you to breathe a little bit. And believe me, in the middle of the night, you're still going to get hot. And you're still going to kick off all your blankets and your sheets and everything. Next, about the bed. Personally, I found that sleeping on an incline, in other words, a wedge that has like a 45 degree angle, I'm trying to draw it here for you, there we go, um, is most effective because it allows for my body to at least allow me to be able to breathe while I'm sleeping. It also allows um, me to keep my gas reflux down, without having to increase the amount of Prilosec. And the reasons for that are very numerous. Uh, one of them being the fact that 
we probably already have osteoporosis if we've been taking Prilosec for anything more than a month. So, there you go. All right, back to sleep. Like I said, it's, it's really strange, but in fibromyalgia and sleep, the issue seems to be that we actually, our brains start to dream even before we're actually in a dream cycle. In other words, I even notice, and this is really strange, that without being able to see a dream, I'm actually starting to hear a dream. In other words, conversations with other people, and so on and so forth. Now, <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but that's really kind of disconcerting because it means that we don't actually go to a place where we stop dreaming. In other words, all we're doing is dream, 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 dream. And when we wake up, we're hurting. And all we want to do is go back to sleep because we're so exhausted. Well, the reason why is because we're not really sleeping. We're dreaming. So the restorative sleep that everybody else gets, that nice, wonderful spot where it's quiet, the brain isn't chasing anything, and you're actually getting some real deep level sleep, we don't go there. So what do we do? Well, remember, this is about balance. And one thing that's about balance is learning to accept certain things. And one of them is, is that if we aren't going to sleep, we aren't going to sleep. You can't make yourself sleep when you can't sleep. You also can't chase yourself throughout the day, hoping that you're going to be able to get sleep at night and be worried about it because it isn't going to help you sleep. If you're still holding down jobs, and many of us are, then what you're going to have to do is talk to your employer about being a little bit more flexible with your hours. In other words, allowing you to work when you can work. And if they don't like that concept, then being self-employed may be the best route for you. Because at least then you can work when you can work. Okay? In other words, when you're fully more awake, when fibromyalgia is not kicking you in the ass so bad that you can't function and your cognitive deduction is so bad that it makes work impossible. All right, back about sleep. Where do we go from here? How do we deal with it? If you have leg cramps, really hearty suggestion is that you look at finding a natural source, if you can, of something called quinine. Quinine was given for malaria. It's recently been pulled off the market because some idiot decided that quinine wasn't fixing malaria. Well, for people with restless leg and or uh, neuropathy, quinine can be quite effective. So now we're kind of stuck because the FDA has decided to, cho to move it off the market. Highlands has something called leg cramps. And Highlands is, an, is a homeopathic medication and is very, very effective. At least it is for many people. Personally, I haven't taken it because, to be quite frank, I've got to choose between taking supplements um, that are effective. Things like um, uh, breakfast substitutes, okay, that are effective and do work and work within my nausea problem. Or I have to be concerned about taking something like quinine alternative. Well, right now... <laughs> morning breakfast is winning. So, here you go. Try as many things as you can to see that work. Watch out for anything that calls itself a nervane in the herbal formula area. Nervane has to do with numbing the nerves. Understand that that's helpful, but at the same time, anything that's a nervane can be an alkaloid which will affect your liver also can build up in the body again we've hit nine almost ten minutes so i'll say goodbye
May God bless you. Take care.